Hi, in this video, I'll go over the Xbox Game Bar's FPS tool. It's included free with all Windows 10 versions. The FPS tool can be viewed while we're simming so that we can make settings adjustments on the fly and see the results in real time. It's a very handy tool. It can also be used to capture video and screenshots of your sim session. I'll briefly cover a few of the other settings for it. The sim has an FPS meter built in the developer menu, but it's super ugly and huge and obtrusive, so this is a much better option in my opinion. I am in the sim right here over Tokyo and I've got the sim paused. Now I'll activate the Xbox game bar using the default Windows plus G key combo and here it is. I'll go over these windows real quick, but they aren't actually the focus of this video. On the capture panel here, you can record and capture your game or simming that you're doing. This button can activate your mic so you can record your voice with the video. This button will record the last 10 minutes of activity in case something happened that you want to save and you weren't already recording. I leave this turned off since it impacts the performance of the sim and lowers FPS. This button on the left will take a screenshot. I should point out that the video recording is limited to 1920 by 1080 resolution, but the screenshot feature will capture the entire resolution of your screen. Down here is the audio control panel. I find this very handy if I have the sim turned up and someone wants to distract, uh, I mean speak to me. I can quickly bring this up with Windows G and mute the audio in the sim. At the top, we have the widget menu with the various features available to us. You can customize this as well. This item here will invoke the widget menu with all of the available features listed out here. In the center of the screen is a gallery window. Whenever you record video or take screenshots, they'll appear in this window. For example, I'll take a screenshot using this button up here and I get the screenshot displayed in the gallery. We can delete it, we can open the file location which will invoke a file explorer window for us at the saved files location. We can create a meme, though I've never done that, and copy it to the clipboard but that's only for screenshots, not video. And we can share it to Twitter. Each screenshot and video clip that you add will be listed over here on the left so you can browse them. For now, I'll delete this screenshot like so, and I'll close this window since we don't really need it for what we're going to be doing here. Back up in the widget menu here, we have audio and capture, which bring up these windows here. We have the performance window item, which we'll be looking at in just a moment. Xbox social, which I don't use since I'm generally anti-social, and it's not applicable to what we're going to do here. Enable click through allows you to pass mouse clicks to the application that's beneath the game bar's windows without closing the game bar. Finally, here we have settings and I'll cover a couple of things here. They just added this item a couple of days ago called gaming features. Right now it just has this direct X ultimate indicator. It lets you know if your system is compatible with direct X 12 ultimate. Sadly, my system is too crappy to work with it but it's going to be used to enhance the look of FS 2020 at some point, so it's certainly something you want to keep an eye on. Shortcuts here allow you to change the default key combos that Game Bar uses, such as the Windows plus G combo. None of this really applies to the focus of this video, but I figured it was a good idea to just give a quick overview. Back up on the widget bar, I'll click on the performance icon to invoke the performance window. This is a performance window here, and this window shows us our FPS, RAM usage, video RAM usage, GPU usage, and CPU usage. Although it shows my GPU at 100%, I don't think it's actually accurate. As with all of the game bar windows, we can move this window around. Using this pin, I can lock the window onto the screen so that it remains there after the game bar interface has been dismissed. This way I can still see the performance data while I'm using my application in real time. You can't move it once you're in your application or change its settings, so to do that I need to re-invoke Game Bar with Windows G like so. Now I can bring up the settings for this window. 
since all I care about here is FPS, I'm going to turn off all of the other items to reduce display clutter and just leave FPS. The VRAM element is a new feature they just added the other day. You can also control the transparency of the FPS window while it's overlaid on your application screen. Right now it's at max opacity. I'll make it transparent by sliding this to 100. I'll dismiss the game bar interface by clicking on the sim screen and you can see the FPS meter now has a transparent background. You can also make the display very tiny, but I'm not going to do that for this demonstration since I want the FPS display to be easy for you folks to see on my screen. I'll reset the size and re-invoke game bar so I can reposition it back down to the bottom of the screen here. I'll reset the transparency back to opaque. You can also change its color like this. I could change it to red or one of these others, but I'm going to leave it at green for this demonstration. Now, by just clicking on the sim screen, I dismiss the game bars interface, but leave the FPS display for us and we're back to FS 2020 in its pause state. You can see I'm averaging about 42 FPS right now. Now I can hit escape and bring up the general options like this. Right here I have all of my display settings and the FPS meter is still updating in real time. I'll put render scaling up to 80 since it has a big FPS impact. I'll apply and save and now my FPS drops down to about 35 or so. I don't even need to leave the settings menu here. I can already see what it's going to do in the sim. We'll put this up to 90 here and see how much it changes. Apply and save. Now we see we're around 30 FPS or so, which is actually about what I typically run the simulator at. Resuming back at the sim screen, I can see it looks slightly better. I can unpause it and you can see the FPS meter stays pretty consistent with what we saw back in the settings menu. I'll pause again and go back to the options, general settings. And just for grins, we'll make a more extreme change and set things to ultra and see what we get. Apply and save. And now it's tanked down into the teens, which I would expect on my system. We'll go back to medium. Apply and save that. We can see the FPS comes back up to about 30, which is typical for my system on the medium preset. As you saw, you can tweak any of these settings and see the FPS impact in real time. So this is great for tuning your system very precisely. I hope this video helps someone out there and until the next video, take care.